Good evening from Global Geek News. This is Mark Edmonds. Breaking news tonight is Dr. Twinstra von Meinstein, the founder of Oracle, has developed a new mind-reading helmet. Join us now as we go to the field with Roger as we interview the scientists and do a product demonstration. I am Dr. Twinstra von Meinstein, and this is my mind-reading helmet. controversy surrounds Facebook as they have bought out mind reading company Oracle for three billion dollars. They intend to use this technology to revolutionize social media, creating a more intimate experience than ever before. Let's cut to Roger as he interviews the general public about this. Excuse me, sir. Can I get your opinion on these cell phone devices we developed? Yes. The Chinese mind control, they're trying to take my guns and my private property. My private property. Okay. Illuminati, that's why I got my, that's why I got my tinfoil hat, protecting from uh, the rays of the bad guys out there, Thank the you. Chinese. Today marks the one year anniversary of the launch of Thoughtful, using the mind reading helmet developed a year and a half ago by the Oracle Company. This technology has revolutionized modern society as people everywhere are using their thoughts to control their technology. The topic has also revolutionized the gaming industry, made mind computer interface possible, and increased social media uploads exponentially. Some researchers have concerns about the long term effects of Thoughtbook on the human brain, but society as a whole has accepted it and integrated it into their everyday lives. It totally changed the entire gaming experience. It's so much more immersive, you know? I felt like I was actually killing them with my thoughts. Good afternoon and a happy new year. Children are 300% more satisfied with Christmas this year as Santa Claus has used Thoughtbook to tell what they really want for Christmas. Here's Thaddeus at the North Pole with Mr. Claus himself. Santa, um, <clears throat> Santa. So how has Thoughtbook been useful to you this Christmas season? Well, with Thoughtbook, I know exactly what every kid wants for Christmas. And since I can read their thoughts, I know whether you've been bad or good. So be good, for goodness sake. Some have raised privacy concerns over the Thoughtbook project. And to discuss these, let's go to our Global Geek News Ethical Analysis Panel. So I think it would be important to uh, introduce ourselves before we start tonight's discussion. I'm Dr. Phil Stottle from Oxford University, where I am a professor of Aristotelian Ethics. And I am Dr. Theo Wogan. I, started, uh, I studied at Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, and I'm a first-year professor at Seville University. Good afternoon, gentlemen, panel. I am Jerry B. Hong, and I'm a senior professor at Antioch University, where I profess philosophy. I'm Dr. Isaac Kant. I teach deontological ethics at the University of Dayton. So, shall we start the discussion? So, discussion point. Yes. Um, let's just start off with the Aristotelian view. I believe that the key focus, the key virtue that we need to see if this technology inhibits or helps is that of philosophy. This is the end goal of Aristotelian ethics, the idea of seeking truth. Now, thoughtful could help in that it allows us to disseminate ideas across billions of people instantly, fostering further discussion but it could be greatly hindered if a government entity or some extremist group tried to shut down the progression of free, free thought throughout thoughtful. Yeah, I mean, I think um, privacy would be an interesting topic to introduce in that, in that view. Uh, what would be your thoughts? 
Well, uh, I think privacy is maybe a sacrifice we need to bring a better and more pleasurable world. And uh, we can see by statistics, 90% of people support this, and they are obviously happy with it. And we can tell someone's walking around smiling, and uh, there's a lot less crime. The 2% uh, of people who reject it are found to be criminals, and uh, that would make sense, because criminals would reject something that exposes their crime. Uh, I would like to see those statistics, but the real question is, you have to look at the categorical imperatives. Do we really want to live in a world where everyone is reading everyone else? Thoughts. I mean, don't you have thoughts which you'd rather keep private, you wouldn't want people to know, because you wouldn't want to hurt people, those thoughts? Well, um, I, I think it, it brings about better thoughts from you, because you know, if they're being seen by a greater audience, it, I guess, uh, regulates your ideas and has you think more po positively. Hmm. Well, some of us might be, want to live in that world, but we also must not treat people as mere means. We must treat people as an end. We must respect people's privacy as part of respecting people's uh, inherent goodness. And I would very much agree with you there. Um, I think the whole idea behind Thoughtbook is that um, it, it's trying to understand people, other humans, trying to understand other humans' hearts and minds. And I, I really just think that's impossible. And I know it's impossible based on the Bible. Um, Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? First uh, Samuel sixteen seven also introduces the idea how of how really God is really the only person who knows the heart. Um, an interesting topic to introduce here too is uh, how the difficulty in controlling your tongue and how um, if you're not controlling your tongue, you can really get yourself in a heap of trouble. And that's seen in James three and um, shortening or not shortening, but uh, lessening the distance between your mind and your tongue greatly increases the difficulty in, com in, in controlling of what comes out of you. Um, that would be my thought. My thoughts. Oh, oh he's wait. Ready. I only thought about it.